Hi, welcome to Grid Down Preparedness. My name's Wade. Uh, today we're going to do some testing on these two Pecron E3600 LFPs. Uh, this testing was actually requested uh, from the service department at Pecron. So they think that the issue with this power station is somehow caused by the 240 volt hub. So I don't want to risk plugging the 240 volt hub back into the power stations until I verify that I don't have a short uh, within a 240 volt hub. The way that I'm going to test this is I have my multimeter set to uh, just measure continuity. So I shouldn't see any continuity between line one and line two. If I do, that's probably indicative of a short. So we're going to go to the grounds first and I have continuity there. We're going to go to the neutral and as expected, there's going to be continuity on the neutral because even at the, once it gets into the breaker box and it gets out to the main panel, the ground and neutral are bonded together at the main panel. So they're going to have continuity throughout the entire system. So now we're going to actually check line one and line two for continuity and we don't have anything. So no continuity between line one and line two. So we're going to switch over the unit to voltage, AC voltage. Now I already have the network cable plugged in. So next step is we're going to connect the plugs to the power station. And just because of the way the cords lay, we're going to go ahead and cross them to get everything lined up. Okay, now the way that I've turned the system on in the past, I'm going to turn it on the exact same way that I've done in the past. So I have my networking cable in for both units and I'm going to turn them both on at the same time. Inverter clicked on that one, inverter short circuit on this one. So this unit is now outputting power and this is the first unit that got replaced. Uh, not replaced but repaired. Uh, and it had a uh, inverter board failure and once they got into it they discovered that uh, the BMS board was also going bad. So right now we hear the 240 hub beeping which tells me that one of the power stations is not outputting power and that's how I actually discovered what was going on. So we're going to take a test right here of the voltage coming out of the, the power station and verify that we do have 120 volts and we do 119.4 is what it says out of there we're going to go to the next power station and we're going to check the voltage coming out of it which is probably going to be zero and I have 0.61 um, volts coming out of this so there's actually no voltage coming out I'm going to go to the 240 hub and we're going to test First, we're going to go to uh, line one to ground, and I'm showing 104.1 volts, line one to ground. Um, line one to neutral, I'm showing 115.6, and it'll be the same over here. So I'll go hot to ground, 104.1, and then line to ground, 115.6. So going in here on the actual main 240 part of it, where I have my line, ground, and neutral, uh, let's see. I believe that this connector here is going to be the ground. So this is ground. And then this here, this connector should give me 120 volts. Okay, so I have nothing on, I have 104 on that line. Uh, the next line would be, um, that would be neutral, but from neutral to ground, I'm showing 15 volts. And then line to uh, ground to ground, about 15 volts. So now we're going to start testing between components. So from one to the other here, I have 6 volts. And then 115 volts here. So that's going to be making the circuit back to the unit. So line to neutral and then back to ground. So uh, there, there is some bleed through, but I think that's just because of the way that uh, this unit's wired internally. I don't know, but those are the voltages. 
This unit's outputting properly. This unit shows inverter failure. Um, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this unit here. And I'm actually going to test from the line to the neutral on here. And I have 0.87 volts. We're going to go from here to ground. I have 29.1 volts. And then we're going to go from the neutral to ground. And I have 28. 0.4 volts. So those are the voltage readings there. Um, going back here with this unit unplugged, this is probably going to say the same thing. So we're going to go to ground and now ground to uh, the line one is 69 volts to neutral is 115.7. And then ground to neutral is 28. You're going to unplug this. So now this is unplugged. It's not going to beep anymore. The units are still networked together. Uh, we're going to do a voltage check here. So we'll put in the negative here, put it the positive here, and we're showing 119.7 volts right there. Um, just verify this one again. It's still sitting at. Make sure I actually have a connection. Uh, this is sitting here at uh, 0.1 volts. Go to ground, 0.15 volts from hot to ground. And then from neutral to ground is uh, 0.1. Uh, turn the unit off. Unit's now off. We'll take a, a reading from line to neutral. Line to neutral is 0.1, line to ground is 0.1, and my meter is zeroed out. If I touch the probes together, the uh, meter is still zeroed out. So that was the test that the manufacturer asked me to conduct. Now, it does say communications failure on the meter here. Even if you unplug this and you turn this on uh, with one network cable plugged into your unit, it's going to give you the message that there's a communications failure and to clear that out we'll turn the output off and we will disconnect the networking cable and we'll turn the unit back on and now uh, it is still saying communications uh, Communications abnormality in series. Okay, so that's still on there. Uh, turn the output off. Turn DC input on. And then we'll turn the AC output on. And we still have that, that same failure, but I did hear the inverter click. Let's test our voltages again. And I am not getting anything out. I have zero. Make sure we're actually touching the contacts. Zero and zero. All right, so we're going to clear this alarm out. I'm going to turn the unit off here. And I'm just going to hold the power button until the unit resets and we see the screen flash. Uh, this can take up to a minute. I'm sorry for the long video, so this is a great time for you guys to like and subscribe. Uh, I hope to get some more uh, portable power stations and even some actual off-grid inverters and server rack batteries. And you guys can help if you would like to do that. You can go uh, join my channel and become a member. And once I get up to a certain point with members, I'm gonna start um, uh, potentially doing uh, live streams for members only, questions and answers, and as the channel grows, I'll only be able to answer uh, the majority of the questions from uh, members. So, 
if that's something that interests you, please uh, feel free to join. But if you don't have the funds, I totally understand. Just please subscribe and share the content. That's been about long enough. We're going to let this thing off, see if the screen flashes. Okay, it's reset. We'll turn the unit on. Click. And we have the click. But we do not have an alarm. So that's been reset from the communications failure. We're going to test our output voltage. And we're back to 119.6. And then about four volts to ground from, from hot. And then neutral to neutral, about two volts. Some stray voltages in there. And that's probably normal. Um, so yeah, th there's uh, actually nothing wrong with this original unit. Uh, they did do a great job of repairing it. So kudos, kudos to Pecron for uh, repairing this unit and getting it returned. Now, the way that I understand that their repair and return policy works is if you've owned your unit for more than four months, they won't replace it, they'll repair it. And that was the case with this. Um, I used this through Hurricane Helene. It ran uh, my deep freezer, ran my refrigerator, and ran some lights inside the house. I was even able to run an air conditioner for a little while with it. However, at three kilowatt hours, I've only got about two hours of runtime on all of the loads that I had. So um, I ordered all of the expansion batteries that you may be able to see behind. We've got uh, four expansion batteries. Those were ordered, those came in after the hurricane, but uh, this power station served me for six months off grid. And it wasn't until I finished construction of the house, I moved everything in, and I said, hey, you know, these power stations are just kind of sitting there. Um, let me get them, make sure they're, they're charged up because I'd stored them at 50% 50, 50 capacity, uh, which is what's recommended for storage. So um, I fired the units up, charged them back up to 100%, and I, I hooked it up. I was running a window air conditioner. Everything was going fine. Um, I turned it off, turned the power station off. Everything was charged. It was plugged into solar in, in the backyard, running in through the window, and everything was going fine. Uh, I went to go turn it on after it had been sitting for a weekend of not being used with no loads running and I powered the unit up and this one said uh, inverter short circuit. Um, so that was sent off. It took about six weeks to get repaired. That is currently the fault that is on this unit. It is the same fault which is inverter short circuit. However, this unit actually still has the, the little clear tape that's over the, the screen. I haven't removed it yet, that's how new the unit is. Uh, this one is less than three months old, and it served well for 42 days off-grid uh, using the 240 voltage hub. Um, I was able to heat water, I was able to run my stove. The only accessory that I could not run in my house, the only appliance I should say, was my three and a half ton heat pump. And I believe the reason for that is not necessarily the power stations. I was able to successfully get it to start one time, but then my soft start on my air conditioner shut the system down because of power consistency. That was the alarm that I got in my soft start was there was a poor power consistency. So it shut the system down to save the inverter. Um, I don't have an oscilloscope, so I can't actually read what the waveform looks like, how, uh, what the total harmonic distortion is on these units under a load because usually under a load you'll see your maximum harmonic distortion. I know that's the case with uh, portable generators. That's why they're not recommended for running electronics, especially that are sensitive to modified sine waves. So I don't know if this is actually a pure sine wave or a modified sine wave, um, but I do know that my um, 6300 watt generator will start and run my three and a half ton air conditioner uh, without a problem, thanks to a soft start. And it doesn't seem to have an issue with the waveform coming out of that. So I don't know if it's just an issue with these two power stations or maybe this had something going wrong that finally presented itself that would not allow me to start that. But I've heard other people had success starting, you know, four ton air conditioners with soft starts uh, with these units. I don't think they're bad units. I think that they, they have some room for improvement they're pretty much a new product, but one thing that I would like to see 
on power stations that I don't see on power stations while we're on this topic is uh, these outlets here are capped at supposed to be 20 amp outlets uh, and this one is 30 amps however there's no breaker between this so theoretically and this is a question could I plug in a 20 amp power cord in here and draw 30 amps out of a 20 amp plug I, I don't know uh, and maybe if you guys have a way to test that my um, kilowatt meter over there doesn't go past 15 amps so if somebody out there can test and see if these outlets will actually draw 30 amps um, I'd like to know but something that I'd like to see on these units are external breakers where you could have a fault have it trip here and not affect uh, the electronics in there because the breaker is supposed to affect uh, and protect this from an external fault so if this had a short in it and I plugged it in here with a shorted out wire it would trip the breaker before it would go inside and maybe they have some sort of internal circuitry that does do the protection there's just no way to reset it other than doing a hard reset and that may be a design for simplicity uh, I don't know but uh, seeing some sort of power breaker on the outside similar to what portable generators have uh, I don't know if that's something that's possible but I think it would make it a lot user friendly a lot more user friendly um, for the more novice users so anyway that's where we're at uh, this video is recorded I'm gonna uh, send this as a link to Pecron and please uh, Pecron's probably gonna see is definitely gonna see it because I'm gonna send them the link to it but go ahead like subscribe share this video uh, with your friends that are interested in these power stations I do still recommend these power stations uh, I do think they're a good product um, I don't know if I just got unlucky and had two of them that ended up having bad inverter boards that didn't present themselves until after the fact but I do think these are good units and I haven't seen uh, many negative comments I've seen more positive comments uh, on my videos than I've seen negative comments but these are still new, new units um, on the market so uh, it'll take a little time to actually prove, prove themselves out uh, these things are supposed to last for 10 years so I'd like this I'd like to do a long-term test and see that we can uh, get these things to uh, their, their end of life and see how long they actually do last so I do plan on keeping these even once they're uh, repaired and functional and I'm gonna keep you guys up to date on what we're using these for because these things are not just gonna sit on a shelf like you see on some other YouTube channels uh, these things are going to constantly be working for me uh, until I get some sort of other solar setup for the house on days where I don't have high cooling or high heating demands I plan to run the house as long as I can off the power grid on these units anyway thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe